it's Paul Kegbein with the Garland County Library, and I'm here with Mary Zunick, who's the Hot Springs Cultural Affairs Manager, and this is Gallery Walk Talk, and tonight's episode is more like a gallery show and tell, because we're going to go on a virtual tour with Mary and learn the latest updates on all of our wonderful galleries in downtown Hot Springs. But first, let's talk about how we are in the midst of the Arts in the Park Week. And I know it's been a busy, successful, eventful week full of events. It absolutely has. Um, in fact, if I look a little frazzled, it's because it's been a long week already and it's only Wednesday. <laughs> um, yeah, Arts in the Park kicked off on Friday and we had three gal or event uh, exhibit openings and um, then two full days of Art Springs Downtown Arts Festival and it is off to a roaring start, uh, plus workshops and um, everything else that, that takes place during Arts in the Park. So in addition to talking about Gallery Walk tonight, I'm also going to talk about um, Arts in the Park and some Arts in the Park events that are still left between now and um, this weekend when we wrap up um, the 10-Day Arts Festival on Sunday, which happens to be Mother's Day. So, um, you know, what better, what better gift for mom? than to uh, purchase some art. Yes, 10 days of culture, kind of like a marathon for you. Yes, yes it is, it is. It's been a busy time, but you know, it's uh, this weekend, last weekend, um, we had some, we had 38 different artists um, with their artwork. We had a, a huge children's area with the Renaissance Festival. The library came and did crafts one day, emergent arts. Um, then we had Sad Daddy and a whole list of other uh, musical performances from um, local and regional artists who, with a real focus on, um, you know, kind of old time music. Uh, our theme this year is Creative Roots. So it's asking artists and celebrating um, inspiration from our heritage. And so on Sunday, we certainly did that with um, the Native American dancers. We had several come over from the Quapaw tribe and in Oklahoma made a six hour trip to come over and dance on the native lands of the Quapaw tribe um, before they were removed from this area. Oh, hey, kitty, kitty. Um, and taken to Oklahoma um, and relocated during their the, the Quapaw's Trail of Tears. Um, and so they are always, they've come to Hot Springs several times to dance and share their, share the native culture with those of us here. That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, a very successful event today at the library that was part of Arts in the Park. Local Author Day, we had about 30 authors signed up. And I, I think it was one of our best turnouts ever. I mean, it's been a couple of years since we've been able to have it, but it's been an annual event before COVID. And um, it was a hit. And all of the authors, um, after having their, their booths, they went to the auditorium and they each filmed a little three minute um, segment on where they introduced themselves and talked about their work. So that was all recorded earlier today. So after you watch this video, go check that out on our Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching. You can learn all about uh, th about 30 of our different local authors, a huge variety, eclectic mix of different genres and, and a huge age range. There was a teenage girl and a woman in her 80s and uh, everything in between. So check those out, support our local authors and other artists. And uh, we have another one coming up. Uh, Sunday is the Mother's Day Story Fest, which is going to feature a local uh, author, Jerry Butler. And we encourage the public to come and share their stories and poems or just memories about their mothers uh, on Mother's Day this Sunday afternoon. That What a great way to spend time with your mom. I, I have some suggestions coming up, too, as as, uh, for other ways to celebrate Mother's Day, but that certainly would be a great way to spend part of Sunday. It's going to be a beautiful weekend, I think, to wrap up Arts Spring, Arts in the Park. Um, but yeah, usually when we do these, I have a guest artist, but or a, a, you know, a local artist that we feature. But this time, I'm going to share a video and just talk about, like I said, the rest of the things that are happening during Arts in the Park for the remainder of the week. Um, so, uh, but we'll. We're so fortunate here in Hot Springs that we have so many talented people, whether authors or musical performers, and of course, our talented 
uh, visual artists as well. Um, later on this month, on the 20th, so flash forward after um, Arts of the Park a little bit, um, local uh, Dryden Pottery, which most people are familiar with who bid the Hot Springs anytime over the past 75 years, they've heard of Dryden Pottery. And Kimbo Dryden um, was selected as an Arkansas Living Treasure. And so on May 20th um, at the convention center from two to four, we will celebrate Kimbo Dryden and um, the, the recipient of a very prestigious award for our state. So um, long history, a very, very talented artists here. So, um, well, let's get started. We'll dive into my little screen show, uh, slideshow here. Okay. And tell me when you're full screen. Oh, whoops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Are we, uh, is it right? Yes, you awesome. have it up. Okay. Oh, and Mary, we hit that little button that says hide at the bottom. Yes, I certainly will. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, this, so we'll get started with gallery walk talk. And I just wanted to point, this was the, uh, the image that the library put together, but isn't that a beautiful uh, gallery, right? That's the legacy gallery. Um, I just think that's such a beautiful space. They have the walls painted that dark color. So the um, artwork really pops. It's just a beautiful, a beautiful gallery. Um, so first, let's get started with a couple of a couple things that we already opened, exhibits that opened at the beginning of Arts in the Park. The Art Moves exhibit opened down along the Hot Springs Creek Greenway Trail. Now, Art Moves is um, an outdoor art exhibit. So what we do is we ask artists from all across the state uh, earlier this year to submit artwork inspired by either their heritage or our state's heritage. And so the top 15 were selected and we made reproductions of those images. So we, we reproduced them on 30 by 40 inch metal panels and those are installed down along the Hot Springs Creek Greenway Trail. And that exhibit opened on Friday and it will be up all year long. Um, this is just a couple of examples of the beautiful images that were selected. But the way that the public can see it, it runs all the way from Hollywood Park, all along the Greenway Trail up to Belding. So by the new majestic fields there, and there are 15 pieces. Um, the, the lower image here is by Hugh Dunahoe. The um, painting on the right is by Catherine Strauss. Uh, but just incredibly talented um, artists from here in Hot Springs, but all around the state. And if you want to, and on, on each of the um, images or on the display panel, there's a QR code that you can just scan that QR code and it takes you to the artist statement and um, information about the artist. Now, some of these images will be able, will be, you can see locally during gallery walk. Um, there will be, it. so when you head out for gallery walk, you can uh, be on the lookout for some of the images that are included in the Art Moves exhibit down along the Greenway Trail. Um, so, and that will be, like I said, up all summer long. Another exhibit that opened on Friday um, to kick off Arts in the Park was the D Disfarmer Photography Exhibit. Mike Disfarmer was a, an Arkansas photographer in Heber Springs. He, um, his studio was open from the 19 teens through the 1950s. And his, his images have just um, become iconic for the specific style of photography, the use of light and um, capturing such pure images. Uh, we actually did a photography workshop earlier before Arts in the Park and did a virtual exhibit that can be found online at hotspringsarts.org. But this Disfarmer exhibition in the Convention Center um, will be up all summer long, and it's in the main concourse. So um, between the Grand Lobby and the arena, you, you can't miss it, 30 images that are reproductions of Mike Disfarmer's photography. Um, so you, you'll... Um, I encourage you to check out the website for more information about this farmer before you go, or even Google him. Um, he was it lived quite an interesting life, 
And I like to think he was probably the small town eccentric, uh, but just just a very interesting fellow. And Paul, feel free to uh, chime in if I miss something or um, you know if you have you have any questions. Will do. I think you're doing great so far. Okay, there we go. And now we've talked about what's the exhibits that are open and um, uh, that will be up, you know, available the rest of the summer, or the rest of the year. Now we'll um, look at a couple of uh, opportunities within the next few days that during Arts in the Park that are still going on. Um, there's a quilting demonstration. You know, as I mentioned, uh, the theme this year was creative roots. And so I, I grew up here in Arkansas. And like I meant a lot of people, I had my grandmother, I remember my grandmother quilting when I was a kid. And then um, I have friends who have quilt who quilts now. And there's a big difference between those patchwork quilts that my grandmother made. They were beautiful and intricate, but in the, the quilts of today. So um, tomorrow there's a quilting demonstration. So everything from the old fashioned um, sewing machines to the newer ones will be um, on display there. And Amy Hoyt, who's the owner of Hickory Hill Quilts out at Hot Springs, toward Hot Springs Village, and Bob, Barbara Kolachek Cox um, will be there doing that demonstration. And that's an emergent arts tomorrow afternoon. Um, and beautiful, I mean, this picture of the quilt is amazing. Um, so such vibrant colors, but let's see. So that's tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow evening, um, there's a resin jewelry workshop at Emergent Arts. And for both of these, you can go to emergentarts.org and look at more information about it. Um, the resin jewelry workshop is going to be so much fun. Um, Jenna White, she's a, an art teacher, I think in Bryant or Benton. Um, but she makes these beautiful um, pieces of jewelry. And so as a part of this workshop tomorrow, um, the participants will be able to make uh, dangly earrings as well as a necklace. Um, there's a slight fee for that one, but just like I said, go to emergentarts.org. And I think usually Emergent even has, um, has scholarships if, if the, the small fee is, a, is an issue. But again, drawing inspiration, our ancestors would have made something beautiful out of whatever was around them. And so when we were starting to talk about different workshops that we could do during the festival, this workshop about making um, jewelry out of uh, flowers and leaves um, that are found here in our beautiful surroundings in the Hot Springs area just seems like a natural fit. And then um, at the Garland County Library tomorrow afternoon, uh, between one and five, Holly Seimert um, will be doing Inspirations in Wearable Art. I am so excited about this workshop. Um, wearable art is something, you know, people don't always think about that. You know, that clothing is functional. Uh, but Holly will, um, will talk about and demonstrate how, um, how it's much more than just functional. That, um, that, that your clothing and fabrics, that how... Um, how it truly is and can be wearable art. And that's at the library tomorrow afternoon. I'm sure there's more information about that on the library website, isn't there, Paul? Or on the Facebook page? Oh, of course, yeah. Just go yeah. to gclibrary.com and click on our calendar and find tomorrow and you can expand for more info about each event. Cool, thanks. Okay, so now we'll kick on into gallery walk. Um, usually how I do it is I kind of walk through uh, or drive through town. If you start on one end of town and take you all the way um, down to the other end. This time we're going to start down on Broadway at the Warehouse and Esther's. Um, I used to say Esther's was our newest gallery, but it's not. We've had one open just within the last month. But Esther's um, is... Uh, represents a variety of local or a wide range of local artists. Don Watson, I couldn't resist the motley crew of artists there on the bottom. You have Wayne Summerhill, whose incredible metal sculpture can be seen there in the top photo. Um, and there's Justin and Steve. So some great artists that are represented there at Esther's Gallery. Um, Don Watson, you can see Don Watson's um, paintings there in the top image. And sometimes Esther even has, or not Esther, um, Jeefer, who's the owner of the gallery, 
even has a musician out front uh, for Gallery Walk. And Esther's and the warehouse are in the same building. So you can go into Esther's gallery. And then in the warehouse, um, there are uh, kind of like an arts fair where artists come in just for the evening and set up their artwork, kind of like an arts and crafts festival. And um, there's music and beverages available. And sometimes she even has snacks. So um, that's a good place to start to start the evening. And you can check for all of these galleries. You can check their website for more information and any hours. Usually galleries are open around five until eight or nine o'clock, but their closing times change just a little bit. So that uh, those gal galleries are over on Broadway. So we'll work our way over now to um, Central Avenue with Justice Gallery. Justice Fine Art Gallery has been open, I think, 17 years. Dolores Justice is the owner. And not only does she own an, a beautiful gallery and represents some wonderful artists, she's a, an extremely talented artist herself. Um, in fact, the image on the top right there, you can see that's one of Dolores, or I'm sorry, that's not. Um, <coughs> Anyway, um, sorry. Yeah, she's a very, very talented artist. I'm sorry, I had a tickle in my throat. Um, so for Gallery Walk this month at Justice Gallery, um, she'll be showing the work of Mark Blaney, Susan Chambers, um, Mike Elsis, Robin Horn, Sammy Peters, um, Sandra Sell, wide variety of local and regional artists, lots of regional artists, and of course, Dolores's work as well. Um, so I invite you, that's usually, usually I start out there, but that's a great crowd. It has Gary Simmons work there. And for Gallery Walk this time, she will feature the artwork of uh, Sarah Riley, her uh, piece from the Art Moves exhibit down along the Greenway Trail. Um, it's called Gurdon Lights. So anybody from this area out there, especially if you're from a little further south, you're well aware of Gurdon Lights. And so uh, you, you might want to stop by. I don't have an image of that or a photo of that here. You can see it on hotspringsarts.org under Art Moves um, or down along the Greenway Trail. But the original will be at Justice Gallery. Okay, now we go on down um, Central Avenue to Legacy Fine Art Gallery. I just think these boats are so beautiful. Um, and there are other uh, images. The artist Harlan um, is his last name. Um, and he, Steve, Stephen Harlan, Stephen Harlan. Um, he's known for his colorful and dramatic nautical themes. So this one, this one has a black background on it, but there's some that are white. The, the, one of my favorite ones from when I was in there the other day was a, one with a white image, but the sailboats just leap off of the uh, panel. They're just so beautiful. Um, and he, he does it. It's digital, but it's one pixel at a time. He transfers his art onto both canvas and aluminum. So, and I think this is one of the aluminum ones. I mean, it's really just glows. It That's looks really like cool. from behind. <laughs> You, you know, what, you, you know, it'd be cool if, you know, since we're such a big lake community, what if uh, we had a gallery that was on a boat? That's what this inspired oh. me to think about. Oh, that's a great like idea. A boat gallery. That's a great idea. Hmm. I'm just putting the idea. I'm not going to be the one to do it, but. I think you should do that. <laughs> um, yeah, the bell. Maybe we could sweet talk whoever's renovating the bell into uh, turning it into a, a floating gallery. Then on down the street, as you're strolling down beautiful Central Avenue and historic hot springs, you'll get to All Things Arkansas. Now, All Things Arkansas is exactly what it sounds like. Everything's from Arkansas. There's everything from jams and jellies to some very, um, some beautiful local artists represented there as well. There are prints, there's ceramic and glass and paintings as well. So um, this is one of those shops that I, anytime I have a guest, I go in there or if I'm looking for a gift for someone that just says Arkansas. 
Um, I'm the director of the Sister City Program, so I'll tell you, I've sent lots of gifts from Japan, to Japan from, from this shop. You can see there, they even have the Bluebird of Happiness um, at All Things Arkansas. And almost always for Gallery Walk, you don't want to miss All Things Arkansas because um, the owners of All Things Arkansas, their son is the very talented Ben Carey, and he's usually in there uh, playing and singing um, on Gallery Walk. So that's a fun stop. American Art Gallery is, um, and I'm sorry, I think I got that out of order. Um, actually, uh, American Art Gallery is before, um, American Art Gallery is before All Things Arkansas, if you're strolling down the street. Um, but um, All Things, uh, American Art Gallery has, it was the, it is the oldest gallery still open in Hot Springs. American Art Gallery was open for the very first gallery walk. Um, and you can see here, I love this image at the top, the painting at the top is, um, it's scroll wood and acrylic work by um, Amber Anderson. So uh, that looks, that's fun. It looks like our Hot Springs gangster days. Um, Anyways, and then the uh, the wood turnings by Virgil Barksdale are the images there on the bottom. Um, those are so beautiful. Virgil's so very talented. And American Art Gallery, they also have lots of gift items and prints. Um, they even have the Thomas Kincaid prints. So um, that's another, another good stop, uh, another good place to run in if you're looking for a nice gift for mom. Um, this is Artist Workshop Gallery. Artist Workshop Gallery is uh, a collection of artists who um, have their work represented in the gallery. Um, American Art Gallery, they're featured artists. Um, this, and I can't, it says American Art Gallery. I did that again this month. Artist Workshop Gallery. Um, Artist Workshop Gallery. At least you have the window there where that where it says it does <laughs> yeah thanks paul thanks for <laughs> um I, I promise i will have it fixed before next month i switched out the images but um uh, artist workshop gallery had they have different featured artists each month but truly that art that gallery has many many artists um, featured in it and um you can um uh, go in and there's, they have lots of jewelry, wood, sculpture, um, paintings from all sorts of regional art artists. Joe Wilcox, he was, he even sat out in front of Artist Workshop Gallery during Art Springs and did a painting demonstration. So he was painting on the sidewalk in front of the Artist Workshop Gallery. And you can see his work there at the, um, at the gallery. And you can also see Joe Wilcox's work at Hotel Hot Springs. Okay, Wrapped Gift Boutique. Wrapped, wrapped is our newest gallery. Um, they just had their grand opening um, the beginning of the week. They're just a couple of doors down from Marais. And for those of you out there who miss Allison Parsons Gallery, um, you'll be so happy because Allison's artwork is featured at Wrapped Gift Boutique. And you can see several images of Allison's uh, paintings, her beautiful flowers, and that nothing says Mother's Day like a bouquet of flowers. And uh, that, especially the tulips, I just think those tulips are so beautiful with the silver background, but Oaklawn, um, Originals, and Prints. And again, wrap, they have gift items too, but some beautiful artwork. And they also have Riley Art Class at Wrapped Gift Boutique now as well. So you can certainly go over and visit Riley Brothers Art Class and see their work there in the gallery, but you can also stop by Wrapped Gift Boutique. Gallery Central is located on the first floor of the Waters Hotel. Um, they have a wide variety of gift items, but they also have um, Janice Polychron and um, their, the artwork of Bob Snyder hanging in their gallery, but also in the Avenue Restaurant. You can see several pieces of Bob Snyder's big, beautiful horses. Um, and as we wrap up racing season um, this weekend, that's a great little stop too. 
to run in there and see those. And now I think they'll be open during gallery walk, but it's you can always go in there. Now Dryden Pottery. So we've made it all the way down Central Avenue and head up Whittington Avenue. Um, at one time you could hit all the galleries just by parking downtown and walking a couple of blocks, but we've spread out a bit more and Dryden Pottery you know, I said um, American Art Gallery was our oldest, but Dryden Pottery is older than that. Dryden Pottery has been there for 70, over 75 years. And they're really known for their vibrant colors and glazes. And of course, that funky building where they're located. Um, but Dryden Pottery, that's the artist Kimbo uh, Dryden is who was selected for the as the Arkansas Living Treasure. And Zach Dryden is the potter that's there now. And you can go in and see the unique, um, kind of some of it kind of wacky. I think the world's largest vase um, is there, um, but just beautiful, vibrant colors. I think my Mother's Day gift last year came from Dryden. Uh, yeah, beautiful cobalt blue uh, vase. And the Dryden family has a library connection too. Oh, do they really? Uh, Jill Dryden uh, married into the family uh, is uh, one of the front desk supervisors at the library. Oh, that's cool. Shout out to Jill and her family. Yeah. Hey, Jill. Yeah. yeah. Love your family's work. <laughs> um, in the same parking lot, so you can park in one spot, run into Dryden, and then go into Circle Gallery at Emergent Arts. Now, Circle Gallery has a, they, they do um, different exhibits each month. And not only do they do some incredible exhibits, I, you know, I mentioned a couple of the workshops that are going to take place there. Um, they offer art classes. There are dance classes. Emergent Arts truly um, celebrates emerging artists and offers opportunities for all of us to tap into our own artistic skills. Uh, the exhibit at, at Emergent Arts this week is called, or this gallery walk is uh, family traditions and exhibition of quilts. And I can't wait to go see that because the colors will be so beautiful. Just this one example that they left here that they showed here um, is just, just so beautiful. Okay, so that kind of wraps up Whittington Gallery is also, I didn't have any new images of Whittington Gallery, but Whittington Gallery is located just a couple of doors down from um, from Dryden and Emergent Arts. So pop in there, they have about 30 artists represented. And one of our, uh, another one of our Art Moves artists has her work uh, represented there. And uh, Marietta Tucker, her work hangs at uh, Whittington Gallery. So let's talk studio tours. Um, that is something that Arts in the Park, we have just kind of become known for this. Um, it's a lot of people's favorite. Uh, Arts in the Park is the 10-day festival. We kick off with um, the Outdoor Arts Festival that we had last weekend, and we finish up big with gallery walk and studio tours the second weekend. And now what's a studio tour? A studio tour, it is a self-guided tour of several of our local studios or our local artists open their studio up and invite the public to come in um, sometimes it's in their home or in an area where, you know, their, where their studio is set up and invite the public to come in and see where they create their artwork. Um, so everything from uh, wood, wood turning to uh, pottery to um, collage and printing and oil painting and um, you name it. There's something for all interests. And so you can try to hit all of them. I think there are 16 of them this time, or you can just pick out the ones that are your favorites, but they're open both Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to show you an example of what a studio tour is. I'm going to show, this is Jean Sparling. Um, I can't, I can't pick favorites of the artist um, galleries or the studios, but Jean Sparling would be near the top of the list. So I'm going to share. This is what happens when you go to a studio, especially Jean's. He always greets you with a smile on his face. So let's check out Forest Path Gallery. Well, welcome. Come in. I'm Jean Sparling. 
right and this is Forge Pack Gallery. Uh, this is the workshop uh, where I do my work and make my things. The gallery is in here. I am uh, primarily a wood turner, do some sculpture work too. I'm primarily a green wood turner. I work mostly with local hardwoods, which are uh, as you can see, we have an abundance of beautiful woods that grow in the local forest. I have the most beautiful farm in the state outside, and that's where most of this material comes from. This is a piece of sculpted pattern that I sculpted a couple of years ago. All of these black lines and colors and patterns are made from the detail. I uh, rub the outside of these with dirt. Basically, it's a plant fungal organism from them. And as you can see, the fungal and mold organisms are growing. And they'll make beautiful colors and lines. And, uh, so, this things. is a process of molding them. At the yes, it's a, yes, a fungus. And it, uh, when we get back in the gallery, and of course, these are different shapes and different forms, that'll be a little pot. And this gives you an idea of how. The bowl comes out of the tree, the tree grows this way. I'll cut a chunk of the tree trunk, split it in half, and then I'll generally make a bowl out of one half and then bowl out of another half. If I want a natural edge bowl, then the rim will be here. If I want a traditional bowl, then it'll turn the other way and the rim will be on this side. When two black lines and two fungus organisms or colonies are eating wood in a tree and they come in contact with one another, they touch, they make one of these black lines. It's called a margin line and it essentially divides the territory between the different colonies. If a fungus colony is eating wood and it comes to a margin line, it'll, it won't propagate. This is a piece of food being grossed in the made out of a tree. This tree grew like this. And the tree, the center of the tree was right here. This was a giant old walnut tree that grew on the banks of the Saline River in North Garland County. But you can see this is where the bark sat, as is this. Uh, you can imagine the curvature of the tree going right around like this. So that's what that's what makes these all these edges. It's not the best of equipment, just a bunch of old cobbled up hand-me-down equipment. Uh, this is the lathe where I do my primary stuff. I have us a piece of spalted hackberry on there today. That's the bark. You can't leave the bark on bowls. naturalistic forms. I've heard it compared, heard it called Native American meets Scandinavian design, uh, but it's just something that evolved naturally. I didn't know I had a style until I made a room full of pieces and then it became apparent. And lo and behold, this is my style. And how long have you been doing it for? Uh, about 15 years uh, since I started becoming, uh, trying to become lots of local hardwoods from my farm. This is cherry. Um, I have uh, ash. Now this is ash that's been exposed to iron, which turns it green. Uh, we have this is a piece of elm. Uh, probably some of my uh, most popular pieces are spalted wood. Now that's uh, This is a piece of holly that has been invaded by decay organisms, fungus and mold organisms, and they're what makes these colors and patterns and black lines. I can also take holly 
and bleach it. And this is a piece of bleached olive. This is actually from the famous tree that grew in downtown Hot Springs, near where the Humane Fountain is now located. Well, that's just a lot of sanding. And, and for some reason, I'm not particularly a perfectionist about many things in my life, but my artwork, I just have a compulsion to make it as good and near perfect as I possibly can, which is somewhat of a wonder to me as well. Now, now I interrupted you. You're going to grab some over here. Oh, uh, no, Kellen. I was uh, just going through more woods. Uh, this is walnut. Uh, beautiful black walnut. You kind of have to like walnut. It's in the rule book. I do lots of forms. My, most of my forms are natural edged. Uh, the wany, waving, varying rims you see on these vessels is not something I've carved. It's the way I take it out of the tree that causes this. This is actually where the bark sat on the outside of the tree. That's why we call it a natural edge bolt. But we sat right here. This tree grew like this. The center of the tree is here. This is where the bark is. Um, so all these convoluted edges you see, that's not something I've carved. That's just the natural outside surface of the tree. Same thing here. This piece would have grown like this. So you can see the outside of this tree had ridges and grooves. That's something pretty interesting. Have a little faith in yourself. Uh, always do excellent quality. Do as good a quality work as you're capable of doing. Oh, just don't be afraid to take the extra risk or risk it all. And uh, try to please yourself. And you may be surprised and how many people are also pleased by what pleases you. Well, there we go. That, um, whoops, I don't want to do that. Let me see. There we go. Okay, so that was Jean Sparling. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that Kimbo is an Arkansas living treasure. I think Jean Sparling is a hot springs treasure. Um, and I know that um, that video was rather lengthy. Um, but so you may think, oh, well, I've already feel I already feel like I visited his gallery or his studio. I promise you, you have not. Um, his his property is beautiful and rarely have I gone out there that I haven't seen a deer or turkeys or but almost always a deer as you're driving up to his property. So um, he's just out south the pot springs out past the mall beautiful weekend for a drive so um, be sure and uh, stop by Forest Path Gallery. But as you head out on Saturday on Saturday only you can stop by Riser Ford, and Riser Ford is our sponsor for um, studio tours. And you can pick up a, a program that has the map in it, or the map of all the studios can be downloaded from the website. And so if you stop by Riser to pick up your map, you will also be able to see the studio space. John Fakencrantz, who does the Vapor Valley artwork he had he moves his studio to riser ford for studio tours so uh, riser they do a great job and are so grateful to them for sponsoring they also have music set up so um, stop by there and see john's studio and um and uh pick up your program whoops there we go let's go on down to the next one there we go so that's saturday and sunday 10 to 4 for studio tours now, a really special treat that we have here at Hot Springs this weekend, we have the IBLA International Music Competition Grand Prize Winners in Concert. 
So May 7th at 7 p.m. Now take note, that's a different time than in our program. Our program had a different location and a different time. So be sure that you take note Saturday the 7th at 7 p.m. at Grand Avenue United Methodist Church. Now you might ask, what is the IBLA International Music Competition? It is a competition where performers from all around the world, um, they enter and the winners of that competition do a tour, a, a world tour basically. And in the United States, their tour ends up in New York and they perform at Carnegie Hall. So we are so fortunate to have these young, talented performers visit us here in Hot Springs and perform at a free concert on Saturday evening. So if you want to take your mother out a little bit early for Mother's Day, or you just enjoy incredibly talented musicians um, and performers, this is where you want to go. We're so grateful that um, David Fleming and Grand Avenue United Methodist Church um, is uh, helping provide a, a location for this. So um, one of the performers has to leave town. So you won't be able to see him perform on Saturday night. So I just thought I would share a little bit of the talent of the performers that you could see on Saturday evening. So here we go. Let me fast forward a little bit here. What a way to finish. <laughs> so that's how you wrap up Arts in the Park. Um, obviously, studio tours is right in the middle of it, but we are just, um, let's see, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Um, but we finish off strong with studio tours and um, gallery walk and the IPLA concert. So um, what a way, it's, it's going to be, we're finishing out a great week. We got started good, um, but this IBLA concert is truly something special for Hot Springs, and it's free. Hope I can't hear you. I thought it might be me. I was on a Zoom no, earlier, and I had my speakers turned off as well as my no, no. Oh, kept sorry. my mic muted in case I had to type anything. Oh. <laughs> we had quite a few comments come in from Claudia. Um, Claudia says, uh, talking about Dryden pottery, I have one of the ashtrays shown in the picture. Oh, and wow. Live right up the street on Whittington, and from a child to an adult, I have seen Dryden pottery go through some wonderful changes. By the way, my ashtray is probably over 50 years old. My parents bought it when smoking was fashionable. Oh. And then during the video, Claudia said the shavings look like spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. Um, That's a very interesting process to watch. Oh, it was. It's just fascinating. And, and Gene Sparling is the nicest fellow. I mean, he's just he's a naturalist. His he has beautiful property that he enjoys. He doesn't just own it. He has hiking trails cut in it and a few years ago during um, arts in the park he and jim larkin led a hike through his property and talked about how nature inspired their artwork which 
you don't have to have a very long conversation with Gene Sparling or Jim either for that matter before you um, you truly find out how um, how inspired they are by nature. And I think Jim was actually our first ever guest on the Gallery Walk series. So. He certainly was. He certainly, and you know, I mentioned the uh, the virtual exhibit. Uh, Jim Larkin and Gene Sparling and Gary Simmons as well both came to that workshop, the the Disfarmer Photography Workshop, to create a virtual exhibit inspired by Mike Disfarmer. So um, I encourage you to um, to go online or act, actually, if we have just a moment, let me see here. I'll pull it up. Um, I think. I'm not screen sharing right now, so I'll just keep talking and make sure that um, the, I can actually get it pulled up. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, I'll go back to sharing my screen. And maybe my cat will stop trying to <laughs> knock the oh, laptop. Okay, yeah, pretty, it's pretty. Let's see here. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'll go here. This is the um, Hot Springs, the Cultural Alliance website, hotspringsarts.org. And so um, you can go to the Disfarmer. So this tells you a little bit about Mike Disfarmer. And the photography workshop that we did on the 24th was led by Don House, an Arkansas portraitist. Portraitist? That was a hard word to say. And these were the participants. So, um, so we each took photos and submitted our photos to include in this photography exhibit. So here you go, the virtual, virtual photography exhibit. It doesn't scroll on its own. These are images by Gary Simmons. These were not, these were, uh, he went home and gathered them from the workshop, but these are some he took a few years ago. Mindy McDearman was one of the other participants. Ashley Missel. Ashley, she got a photo of her husband and her dog. I think I, I have a has my husband and my cat. So um, let's see here. So this is, I'm kind of going backward. I'm gonna flip through the ones we've already been through. Sorry, there we go. Now we'll go, go forward. Jada is a student at Arkansas School for Math, Science, and the Arts, and these are the images that she took. It was really nice. After the workshop, he had his photography backdrop uh, put up with the lighting so that we could use, use the proper lighting. And um, several of us just used our phones, though. Some had their cameras, um, but it wasn't a requirement to have a fancy camera or anything. We could just use our phones. So this one's by Jim Larkin. That one's mine. <laughs> My husband will be glad I included that one here. Do you remember when that uh, base made a cameo in one of our <laughs> programs? Oh, yeah. Not You couldn't see it, but you could certainly hear it. <laughs> you know, My husband plays bass, and he plays every Sunday at our church. And so he was practicing one night while um, I was doing this program and you could hear the bass and the uh, rhythm of the bass didn't make a, a flag pop up or something and it kicked us off the air because mm -hmm. we were playing music that was- Yeah, we got a copyright strike. Copy, yeah, that was it. From the bass line in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> So, and here's the artist, Lori Arnold, stopped by my house, so I made her be a model. And there's my cat. See, we've seen your cat, Paul. There's mine. <laughs> I don't know that any of us are going to be the next Mike Disfarmer, but it was certainly fun to try out a workshop you know, I've never, I've never taken a workshop, I don't think, during Arts in the Park. I've always helped uh, facilitate the workshops and promote them, but I've never sat down and taken part in one. So it was so much fun. I encourage everybody out there, if you 
even if you think, oh, I'm not an artist or, well, I'm certainly not a photographer, but I had a lot of fun hanging out with some other artists who weren't photographers either, but just kind of put themselves out there and gave it a try and had a new experience. There is a professional photographer though, Bob Dion. <laughs> Those are his, you can tell they're a little better than some of ours. This is Jean Sparling. Isn't it interesting how someone can use the same device, but just the way the, the artist, the photographer captures it can change. Yes, absolutely. So there we go. Whoops, stop sharing. There we go. So just a little sneak peek of the virtual exhibit, but you, like I said, hours pale in comparison to the real thing, the Disfarmer exhibit that's in the convention center. And just again, we're so lucky to have that here in Hot Springs. Um, to have 30 images. And Mike Desar, his originals were, uh, the plates were smaller. So the only images I have ever seen that were Disfarmer originals were only about this big. And they're amazing. Well, ours are 11 by 17. So they're very large. So, but you do not lose any of the detail. It's so crisp and the facial expressions. And most of them are full body images. So, you see the clothing, you see what, you know, their, how they wear, wear their belts or what their hairstyle is, um, how scuffed their shoes are. And it was in a period of time in rural Arkansas from the mid teens through the 1950s. Um, that's, that's where my fam my family wasn't in Heber Springs. We were a couple hours um, further um, Southwest, but I mean, they, they look like, they look like my people. And that was kind of the whole point of the of this cult creative roots theme was to draw inspiration from our past. So just kind of taking it full circle, doing what they, the artwork that they celebrated and, and moving it forward. So that was the purpose of this uh, virtual exhibit. Wonderful. Yeah. So that about wraps it up. I don't think I have anything else, Paul. Any questions? Are there any riveted viewers out there that want to know more? Yeah, let's let's do a last call. Uh, share, share your experiences like Claudia did. Um, on, on what's your favorite gallery or what do you like seeing at each gallery walk? And uh, r remind them of the monthly time and day. Oh, gallery walk for over 32 years. The first Friday of every single month. Uh, beginning at five, usually going till eight or nine, just depending on the gallery. But you can certainly check their website, their Facebook page. I think they all have pretty active Facebook pages and um, see their exact time. So because you don't want to miss one. Yes. And, we and try some of them will go in and you even, they'll give you a little beverage to, to uh, sip on um, while you um, appreciate the artwork. And this is a special one. Gallery walks always celebrate the opening of an exhibit or have artists present. And so it's really a special time to, um, to go into the galleries. Excellent. And we try and have this series gallery walk talk on the first Wednesday of every month. And usually Mary will have a guest artist and they don't always necessarily tie into the galleries themselves, um, but it's just, they're all in the spirit of our local art and culture. So tune in to those, uh, stay tuned for upcoming announcements of more episodes and guests, and please take a look at the previous episodes. Um, we've done over a dozen um, episodes so far with each with a huge variety of guests. Who are some of the people we've had other than um, Jim Larkin, Zach Dryden? Barbara Cade, um... Uh, let's see, Gary Simmons, Richard Stevens, Dolores Justice. I mean, we've we've had lots of different artists on. Um, we've had Perry and Hurd, the artist who painted the mural. Oh my goodness, I didn't talk about the mural. Um, okay, so when you're out during gallery walk or um, downtown anytime now, what, drive down Central Avenue, 
just as you're, you pass Whittington, do a turnaround there at the fountain, sure. come back and see that beautiful mural being painted by Donna Brissonnet, and uh, it will knock your socks off. It is so beautiful and it's in process. So every day it just gets a little bit closer. Um, we may have rain tomorrow that might slow her down, but um, every time I drive by, it's amazing how much she's been able to accomplish and a little bit of extra fun, a little bit of art happening right there. In addition to the mural, one of Donna's friends who's a mural artist was painting a mural in Dallas and saw that she was in hot springs. He had only he'd followed her on um, Instagram, I think. And so he drove up and is helping her paint and his car is parked on the street in front of her by collective coffee. Mm. And he is painting a mural on his car. So right. yeah, he's painting his car. He's painting a giant octopus on his car. It is the coolest thing. So right here in Hot Springs during Arts in the Park, we have a mural in progress and a uh, a car being painted with an octopus. That so, sounds like a yeah. couple of potential guests for the future right there. Absolutely. I, I saw the um, work in progress when it started on, uh, what, well, on what day did I go? What, when was the chalk walk? Was that Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. I, I went and judged the chalk walk and that, that was awesome. I hope that you guys upload those photos online. That was very difficult to judge. Oh yeah. There was some all, great. All the kids, uh, chalk art, but, but yeah, well, b before I went to that, yeah, we saw the, the mural in progress and it's, it's so massive. And I don't know. I mean, even if, even if you have a guide that you're going off of, the scale is just completely exponentially larger than whatever she has in her hand up there to compare it to. So. Right. Well, and there was a lot of discussion, especially online discussion about the mural before mm -hmm. it started. And part of the reason for that, I think, is because something that we've never had happened before when a mural was going to take place is that the digital sketch is what is put online to judge it by. Because a digital sketch, so... Basically, it's like taking a picture outside and then superimposing these digital vibrant colors over the top of it. That's never how it looks when it goes on the wall. That's a sketch. Um, somebody, I heard somebody were kind of uh, uh, compare it to, remember uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Where, or, you know, those that were, it's like putting a cartoon image yeah, over a realistic yeah. backdrop. It's mm -hmm. just not the same. It's not what it's going to look like. And so it's been interesting to see it actually take place or, you know, move forward. And um, I, it's a beautiful image and certainly an asset to our Hot Springs arts scene. Yeah. Well, yeah, we could do a whole episode on that. So look forward to, to and, and seeing the finished product, too. And I think we're going to be able to even do, they're going to do a workshop this weekend at Watkins Park. So there will be a new mural happening at Watkins Park there on Park Avenue. And then, another couple of comments from He says, I have been watching the painting of the new mural every day. It is amazing. And wants to introduce herself to you. Uh, Mary, I'm Claudia, is it Cravens or Cravens? My dad, of course, was Reggie. Oh. I enjoyed your live show today. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Claudia. In fact, Claudia is in one of our murals. Um, the mural the on, on uh, Malvern Avenue, there on the side of the building where Collective used to be next to the Henry Glover Parklet. Um, uh, Claudia Cravens is in that mural with her father's base. Cool. So if you want to see his, he was, I mean, Hot Springs, everybody in Hot Springs knew him. So it's great that he should be included in the Black Broadway mural. Absolutely. So and Claudia was there representing. All right. Well, um, I think that wraps it up. Thanks so much, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, anyone that watched this one, uh, this one might be a little more time sensitive to share than others uh, because it has some information at the beginning, of course, about the next few days of Arts in the Park. So be sure to share this. Um, and go back and watch all those old episodes that are uh, with timeless guests. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Mary, for everything you do. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thanks so much. The library is awesome, and you're a huge part of it. So thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Until next time.